Hey guys, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle and we did it again. So you guys said you wanted us to do another build like we did on Snake Discovery, but this time more of a tutorial. I'll tell you, I don't know how we finished that one in six hours, but we definitely didn't have any time to teach it. So this is kind of fun, but you know, we sort of freestyle through these builds and let them become what they're gonna become. Make sure that we add our personal touch and this is how we did it. So what we want to do, I still want to do my swing hide here, but I'm going to use one stud vertically going up in the corner instead of having a stud going this way and a stud going that way, creating an awkward corner piece. And then because we don't have as much width on this thing, I don't want to have the window in the middle. I'm going to push it more or less all the way to one side. That way we can kind of frame a, a vertical stud on this side and this side of our window ledge or our shelf where the animal can bask and it will still clear the swinging action of this hide which was a problem with snake discovery we had to get in there with a hacksaw and chop it out i still want to show you guys the technique that i used to make that fake rock wall i think what i may do is do kind of like the the boulder silo style rocks on top and use that same foam to create some fake bricks on the bottom here and here i think that'll give it a really cool pittsburgh vibe and then for the window to simplify this, because we have a glass tank and we're wrapping all three sides to make sure it gets insulated, instead of introducing a separate piece and building it out, I can just build a, a little faux window frame and leave this portion of glass right here open to the back. Maybe adding a small LED light on the outside of the tank will give it that backlit uh, look that will be so cool. And then by having the basking area here the animal can enjoy it so we're moving the heat source on the other cage was more here moving it over to one side because we have again that smaller cage and i think we can still do a water feature we'll just have to minimize it a little bit it should be pretty fun i've got pallets that aren't broken down pallets that are these are all before i broke any of these things down i made sure that they were not chemically treated they're all heat treated so it'll be good but that's that's a nice piece because it's really thin here that won't take up you know too much space in our build but it's thick enough to kind of insulate put some nails through oh look at check it out that's gonna be our hide piece right there the entrance and exit to our hide all right big shock so Garrett's on the phone right now while we're in the middle of trying to film a video so I went ahead and cut all that for him so we'll build the rest of this thing as soon as he gets off the phone Garrett All right, let's build something. This is kind of how we figured out a really simple hinge on the fly. These pieces are gonna stand vertically. Now, in order for this to hinge up so that we can ac have access to the snake later, what we needed was a piece that is the same length as this to go on the back and we're gonna drive two screws right through this into this guy. When we're done, we'll have two screws sticking out like this and it can kind of hinge on that. So what you want are some screws that have a long straight shaft at the end that's about as long as the piece of wood that you have so that when I put this in there, I'm gonna make that hole big with a little bit of slop so that it can easily move in there. I'm gonna make sure this is in the right place this isn't the piece we're hinging, but that's the full height. This is the actual piece we're hinging, and all I need to do is put a screw through at some level underneath that line, about the same on both sides. Countersink. All right, so we put it in, and then I actually just back these up a little bit so that it's pretty loose. What you want is that when it sits there, it's very easy to spin this thing. You want a little bit of space in the back so that when this thing swings up and down, remember you're gonna have a, a solid wall across here. So when that swings up and down, you don't have any issues. make this part a little extra fancy what I want to do is have diagonal wall slats so all I'm gonna do is lay my studs parallel pick any random angle lay them down screw them in and cut the ends off stand it up and see how 
how it looks. There it is. So here's our back trim piece and our little guy. And if you had a bigger cage like I did, I put some old tools up there. Okay, now for this wall, we want to use the same angle, but in reverse. And that's going to give us a cool chevron effect between the wall that we currently built and the next vertical stud on the backside. I really don't even measure things. I'm like, okay, it has to be this tall. So I'm gonna put this one in there, make a mark, cut it there and keep moving forward. I eyeballed it. I don't know what angle this is, but this angle is gonna match that angle. Check it out on the backside. So I'm gonna use this same stud to attach these. All I need to do is line that up flush and I'll have the same angle on this side as I do on that side. do is we're gonna wrap around with the foam and do the fake rock and brick so I'm gonna I've got this piece with a nice kind of cut edge right here I plan to notch these out I think that'll make a nice detail we'll put one more stud over here in the corner this is what this detail is gonna look like we're gonna put that right in there and that'll be our window thing. We can pick whatever height we want, it's just how much glass to rock background that we want. So I'm gonna put it right about here, and then we'll put a little window trim piece around the side like that. And I've got a notch out for one more stud over in this corner. some cool patina trim pieces for this little window section right here. For our rock wall, we're going to actually carve out some insulation foam board and cover it with dry lock. So what we want to do is just kind of draw a semi-natural looking stone layout. This would be like imagine the side of an old stone silo. And then we're going to carve out the grout lines between the stone with a wire brush. All right, so the main thing here is cut them a little bit small, smaller than the actual dimension. And we're just going to use silicone to kind of cover the gaps. When you have it small, it's gonna fit in so much easier. You won't have to hack something out last minute.
looks uh, not promising. I forgot about this frame piece on these cages that you only get these little bits that pop out. And then the front opening is so small too. Gosh, <laughs> look, it's off by like three quarters of an inch. I should have built it like that much narrower so that it can fit in there. Look at this. There's a big substrate dam so it can't come through the front. And then there's this giant frame right here. I don't know why in my head I had thought that that, you know, could pop out. I think this yep. is a problem for tomorrow. Probably. That'll be day three of the miniature version of a build we somehow pulled off in six hours. Okay, cage. I don't like you, and you don't like me. Uh, we're gonna make this work. Just plastic bends to my well. We finally made it fit. Final fitment. Well, all that's left is everything. We gotta paint the rock, we gotta secure everything, we gotta set it up, get the substrate in there, get it heated. All right, painting time. So we're gonna go with a white dry lock and then cheap acrylic, non-toxic paint, like you'd use for kids' projects. I grabbed a little black, a little brown. We'll just mix it up, we'll throw it in there, and then we'll throw some sand on for some final texture. I think it'll look good. Well, we intentionally bought too much of this black paint for what we were doing with the rock wall. And the reason why is because if you come around the outside of the tank, like this is not gonna be tucked in a cubby. This is gonna, whole thing's gonna be out on display. I think the wood looks great. But from here over, what you're gonna see is that, which is pretty ridiculous looking. So we're just taking that same kind of non-toxic acrylic craft paint and we're just gonna black these sides out. I'll just paint right on the outside. It's quick, easy, it's cheap. The snake's not exposed to it. And we'll just put a couple coats of this on there. And that way, when you view it from, this has nothing to do with the inside of the design, but when we view it from the outside, it'll look good. And then because we have our window here where we're gonna see through the glass, what I wanna do is basically just black out underneath it like that so that when you look through from this side, all you're seeing is that, that black underneath. So we'll finish that off once we have the whole thing in. Um, and that'll let light through the window side, but not anywhere else. Also, you don't have to be too afraid to commit to painting your tank, because this stuff, if you ever wanted it off, it scrapes off with a razor blade. So if you ever change your tank or something like that, you can just scrape it right off later. Painting the sides in the back of a glass tank is actually something I recommend doing even if you're not doing a crazy build like this because you don't want the animal to feel like it's sitting out on display for all predators to see. That's a, a good recipe for a snappy little retic or one that hides all the time, any snake for that matter. So if you paint the back and sides, they can get a little bit more of that feeling like they're in a cave. Now to really put it over the top, what we want to do is get the smallest fountain pump we can find and actually adapt that to some copper pipe which will look really good after we heat it up and sweat it all together.
Okay, so this part requires a little bit of advanced know-how. I mean, I'm sure you can YouTube how to solder copper pipe. And it's the most expensive part of the build because all of these copper bits are very expensive these days. However, it's also the part that everybody commented on the Snake Discovery build that really puts it over the top. So I'm just gonna kind of briefly show you how I set this up. And if you wanted to make a nice little water feature for your cage like this, that also had the antibacterial properties of copper, like it does running through your house, you can go ahead and tackle that. Well, they always say that the last 10% takes 90% of the effort. So let's get into it. So we wanted to do the rope thing, but I just don't think there's space in our little cage for like a, a big long one to go on. So I grabbed a couple extra pieces of copper and I got this one with the dog ears on it. What I plan to do is kind of attach that to that, um, that stud that's going up besides the window. And this piece here can then act as one more little area of perch and then I grabbed this section of rope and what you you probably can't see on there is that I went ahead and put a yeah, you might be able to see right there I drove a screw through it to keep all of these things flat I went in and hot glued in between the seams and then I'm gonna go ahead and make this part stay exactly the way it is too and we'll take a little hot glue and just let this sit naturally once we put that up on there and that way we've got a little bit of a hammock for the snake to climb around in Well, that's all I have for you guys. I'm sorry if you were expecting a exact step one, two, three, measure these pieces, this is how much it goes. With me, these projects, a lot of times, they just kind of take on a life of their own. And so the way to do it is to grab some pieces, have some ideas, and just start getting into it. The pieces kind of come together in the way that they want to, and it really makes for a pleasing result. Each one a little bit unique, and with all the character and history, of the pieces that you put in it.